So if you don't know who Jane Franklin is, you have obviously been living under a rock. She is the closest thing we have in cybersecurity to a celebrity, and she is a massive advocate for women in cyber, as well as an advisor to some of the best CISOs globally. Now, Jane, your book, Insecurity, was an Amazon bestseller. So what is coming next for you? So really, um, what I'm working on is actually helping women to raise their, um, raise their visibility, actually, their voice and their visibility. And I'm doing that through a program. So it's all about personal branding and influence. Because the way that I see it is we've got to really tackle the issue of how to attract and retain women in cybersecurity at the top and also throughout the whole kind of ecosystem. So um, women right now, are not being seen. We have some amazing role models in cybersecurity when it comes to women, but most of us don't know who, who they are. Mm. So um, really what we need to do is, is create more visible role models so that we can actually help other women come into the industry and see that there are women in the industry and they're doing really well throughout, You know whether that's starting out or in those leadership roles, and then also help the women in the industry to remain in it because more women leave the industry than, than actually join it. So by helping them to really understand how to work their personal brand, how to uh, really impact their audience and attract opportunities to, to them, then we cover off lots of lots and lots of things like it could be they are getting better opportunities, they are getting um, better job opportunities, or they are, if they've got their own business or they're responsible for sales, then they are attracting better clients. They are also able to reduce the risk of not being paid fairly. Mm -hmm. So all of these things, which you know I mentioned in the book, and there's a whole chapter on personal branding, um, we really need to do. So for me, it's really looking at helping the women in the industry to really reclaim their power or reignite their power and really learn how to use some of the soft skills in order to do that. Now, I'm not kind of keeping that just for women because for me, I'm very much a big kind of um, advocate for together as men and women. And I also think that it builds our strength. You know, we're, we're not shying away from anything. So when I have offered the personal branding program, because I've run it for two years now, but I'm stepping up and doing it in a much bigger way, you know, I am offering it to, to men as well. So CISOs, as I have done before, and leaders in, in cybersecurity. But there is, you know, one that is purely for women because sometimes women want to learn together. So that is a global kind of program. It's going to be online. You know, there will be an opportunity to do it offline as well. Um, the other thing that I'm doing is really looking at influencing and helping those right at the very top to really understand the problem. And that's really taking the book and developing a program. And it is about creating a program for women that will help to attract and retain and develop women within the industry. But it's also going to be more than that. So it's actually going to be solving a bigger issue than just you know the gender diversity issue. And what I'm seeing in the industry is that leaders, well, I, I keep saying the fish rots from, from the head down. So unless we actually help the leaders in the industry to really understand what the problem is, um, then we're not going to affect. We're not going to be able to affect any change at all. And for me, often, you know, I do work with with CISO. So you mentioned that at the very beginning. But I kind of act as a bit of a bridge. So working with the CISOs, still working with with the women as well, but working with the CISOs and working with the board, working with the non-executive directors, and also working with small businesses. So helping them to understand, you know, what is what is security and to really step up because unless it is really understood, we're not gonna be able to tackle the problems that we have. And this does relate to women because my big kind of message is that if we don't have the women in the industry, then we are more insecure. So it's absolutely paramount that we, we get them in, in the industry and remaining in. And as a result, we have to help the leaders the CISOs and also the board and non-executives to really understand the challenges of, of what we do. 
So we've seen over the last couple of years a real change where the board actually takes security seriously now. Um, and actually it seems like there's a bit of a skills gap for those people at the top to still have that conversation and make themselves understood. It sounds like this might help, but is that actually a problem that you're seeing too? Yes, I am. And, you know, I, I write a lot and actually my last blog, you know, I, I was writing about that. And the way that I see it is right now we have to help the CISOs, the, the security leaders to be able to understand what's going on you know with their stakeholders so it is understanding what's going on with the board you know what language do the board speak you know seeing the world through their lens but also it's it's the other stakeholders as well so it is the CFOs the CIOs the HR um, leaders as well so right now and it's controversial me kind of saying this a lot of the time there is a lot of talk about the CISOs getting access to the board a lot of the time it's very very limited a lot of the time they are prevented from getting to the board you know sometimes that's because it's a for a political reason um, with the CIO wanting to remain in power or not to let the CISOs actually tell the board what is going on and sometimes it's because the board uh, the CISOs don't actually have the language skills um, to actually communicate effectively to the board and be, un be understood so f for me I need to see the CISOs and want I'm helping the CISOs to step up into you know that that role that that bigger role and really again claim their spot you know, which they don't really have now. They're struggling and to a certain extent, I think playing the victim, you know, the victim in all of it. Yeah. So it's about empowering them and teaching them and, and getting them actually to work on it and to treat it as a priority, um, which is really hard because they're under so much pressure. Yeah, they have so many other yeah. things to think about, right? Yeah. Now, you mentioned that there are some amazing female role models, and there are. I'm constantly amazed by the things that women in this industry are doing. Why do you think they aren't getting the recognition that other people are? Again, I think it's because, well, I think they would have the recognition, but I think they're shying away from it. And sometimes it's simply because they are too busy. You know, so it's, it's them not making it a priority, so them not treating it as an asset. Um, so that definitely goes on. They're very, very busy. It's not a priority for them, so they don't make the time. They don't understand why it's so important. And also important now, but particularly with regards to the way that the industry or work is changing with Industry 4.0 coming, you know, as being on the cusp of it. So, um, so that's one reason. The other is because they're fearful. You know, so they, they're fearful because if they are, they are in a minority, whether it's 10% or 20%, because um, the, the statistics will, will vary, that more eyes go on them. Mm -hmm. So if they do mess up, which they will mess up at some point in time, because it's only natural, we all fail and that's how we learn, there are more eyes on them and there's more criticism and there's also more trolling. So there's more trolling of, of women by men and women you know when things go on so you have to be you have to have mechanisms in place in order to protect yourself and make you feel more secure and more resilient when that happens so it's very similar to our industry it's not a case of if it's going to happen it's a case of when it's going to happen so that's why again coming back to creating the role models and helping the women to own their power and to to step up and reclaim it and make an impact and remain in the industry. That's why it's, it's so very important that we do support one another. You know, definitely as, as women, you know, shine light on other women, support one another, be there for, for one another, but also as a bigger kind of cause. So the men do support the women. I know so many great men out there who are really championing, you know, this book and a lot of the work that I do and a lot of the work that other women are doing in order to help you know, with, with the issue. So it's a combination of prioritizing, not treating it as an asset and really understanding the value of it. And then also that whole, you know, visibility, fearful, you know, side, side of things. And that's where I think you've really got it right, because you have a lot of men involved in mm. the campaign and a lot of uh, male role models who are supporting women. It seems like that's the big difference. Yeah, and even, you know, even with the tribe, you know, so I've got the insecurity movement and the insecurity tribe, which follows on from, from the book. 
but it really is, you know, I didn't, I actually, I thought long and hard about, do I create another women's in program? I've still kind of toyed with it, do I, don't I, for all the valuable reasons. But there are lots of them out there. And, you know, with this, you know, when I offer training programs and things like that, I'm offering it to men and women and also women only in case they do. But I find that it's more impactful and more powerful. And my message is true to my message because it is all about doing this together. So we don't need a man to come come and, and save us or take over or help us but we do need men to come with us and do this together because that's how we evolve that's how we evolve as a species together men and women standing side by side moving forward together as opposed to homogenous you know or take over you know so it's, it's really important that i'm true to the values that i believe in and true to the essence of, of the book which is all to do with together we must progress and also the the other you know practical thing is the majority of our industry is men mm -hmm. we can't do this without them so um, we need men to come and help us you know to move forward and as i always say what's good for women is good for men mm -hmm. so it makes sense and you mentioned around the statistics, so it seems like over the last couple of years there are more women in the industry, whether that's through a different way of reporting or hopefully because there are more of us. Do you think that's going to continue to increase? Yes, definitely. I've got to say that. I mean, it's like, <laughs> abs absolutely. We're seeing it. Yeah, we yeah. are seeing it. And, and also what we're seeing is a different take on the numbers. So even with, you know, IC squared, I keep looking at the book because I just want to like pick it up and hold it. But... <laughs> With a, this book originated from a report that I saw in 2015 by IC Squared, which really presented the numbers. So in 2015, the numbers were 10%. You know, so they were saying that we have 10% of women in the industry, which really surprised me because I've been in the industry for, I mean, now it's this is my 22nd year in the industry, whereas at that point in time, you know, it wasn't, you know, whatever it was, 17, 18 um, years. That surprised me because I actually thought there were more women in the industry than that which you know IC squared had had revealed but I, what bothered me was actually seeing that declining trend mm -hmm. you know so year on year I think for the past five years at that point it was declining and or stagnating actually so declining and stagnating which was a concern which really meant you know me blogging about it and then you know, writing the book and, and now kind of championing this in a really big way. So, um, you know, so kind of like back to our more women coming in. Yes, and we are changing the story. We're changing the narrative and we're changing the figures because if we just purely concentrate on those low numbers, then that can put women off from coming into the industry. You know, so, and I, I wrote about that in the book. So it's really important, I think, that we do present a different story, a better story, and whether that's by presenting the stats in a different way, you know, so be it. But we really need to do that, you know, because we're not yet at that tipping point, which is usually about 30%. So we've got a lot more work, a lot more work to do, you know, in order to ensure that they're coming in, staying in, and that we're building upon that. Brilliant. Well, I think there can be no better person to teach people about personal branding than you. You've done Thank an amazing you. job with the book. So if people do want to get involved or they do want to learn more, where do they need to go? How do they get in touch? So there are there are two places. They can actually come and contact me on my website. So I've got jane-franklin.com and then I've also got cybersecuritycapital.com. So either of those two places, they will get to me. But um, I tell you what I'll do, I'll give you a link that you can you know, put, you know, include with this video or something like that, which may help. And then that will give them access to exactly where they need to go in order to get that information. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming in and talking with us. Thank you. Thanks, Carla.